What's good? It's your boy, Fanon. I'm going to talk a little Keith Thurman, Errol Spence, and Floyd Mayweather today. There was an interview on Fight Hype. Shout out to Fight Hype. And it's funny to say shout out to Fight Hype because at the same time, I'm going to acknowledge the fact that these guy, that guy, they always get good interviews. They get really good access to boxers. But sometimes, man... <laughs> Sometimes they just go a little too far with their uh, puffing up of the um, <laughs> of the fighter's ego, man. And I know I can imagine that these guys, some of these guys are real hard you know, to get along with because, you know, they believe that and it's reasonable that, you know, people think you need to ride with them. And if you're going to ride with them and represent them the right way, then they're going to give you access. Right. And they're going to, you know, give you the tidbits you need to, you know, you know, one hand, you know, one hand washes the other, right? And <laughs> fight hype with Floyd Mayweather Jr., from what I can remember watching, it really did come up because they have, because they had and have a very good relationship with Floyd Mayweather Jr. and always, you know, gave him positive coverage from what I, from what I know. And, you know, now they've kind of expanded that to other boxers. Uh, <laughs> Andre Ward gives them, you know, some really good private interviews and all that. And I understand that, man. That's their business model, and that's cool. But I just watched an interview with Keith Thurman in which the very beginning of the interview that was on Fight Hype, but I think the guy tried to edit it <laughs> to where they wasn't too clear what he said. Where he's tell where he tells, and I'm pretty sure that's the same guy. I won't mention his name. That is in that is you know the fight hype guy that does most of the interviews. <laughs> he says to Keith Thurman, "Hey, you're pretty much like the new Floyd Mayweather Jr." <laughs> now I know that he was talking about the WBC belt and the WBA belt, right? <laughs> but even even Keith Thurman looked at him like, huh? <laughs> like, hey, man, come on, dog. <laughs> Don't try so hard, man. Don't try so hard. But anyway, to the point, man, I thought I thought that was hilarious, man, because I know, hey, he risked his relationship with Floyd saying that because, you know, Floyd is, you know, that's kind of a, he's a sensitive dude. If he hears that uh, you're, you're trying to say that uh, that um, Keith Thurman is the new him when when he's not done getting his camera shine. Hey man, he might he might be trying to cut back those interviews on Fight Hype, dog. <laughs> Dante, Dante's boxing nation. He's going to call Floyd up, and let him know. <laughs> anyway, man, that was hilarious to me. That was just a little bit of excessive, uh, you know, <laughs> head up the backside action right there. But in answering the question after Keith Thurman gave him this look, like what he said, well, yeah, you know, he's the guy that everybody wants. And he, he goes into this conversation about uh, Errol Spence and he goes in and he talks about Sean Porter. Now, briefly what he said, because I'm not going to use I'm not going to use the audio from that. And I respect those cats, the rights that they have to the to their work product. Um, so all I can all I can do is is uh, is paraphrase it. He basically said that he ain't worried about Sean Porter. He beat Sean Porter once. He'll be Sean Porter again. And that he went he talked about the workouts that he had. They had with Sean Porter before the first bout and let him know pretty much this cat was a sparring partner for me and I'm faster than him, you know, in the pool. I'm faster than him by in you know, running. I, you know, I did just enough to beat him in the sparring session. So I'm not worried about him. I'm going, I'll beat him before I beat him again. And then, you know, that's all fair, fair and good. And then he talked to about Errol Spence Jr. And he mentioned that when this fight happens with Errol Spence Jr. And that was the first time that I had heard that he talked about it as an inevitability, provided that, of course, then he put his asterisks or his caveats in there that people continue to win, right? And he's talking about Errol Spence winning. I suppose he's talking about himself winning. And, you know, how the media and the, you know, the Twitter, he mentioned guys on Twitter, but, you know, social media is really helping him out because they're pushing and making this bout a really big thing uh, because he doesn't have a uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr. to fight him or a Manny Pacquiao. And if people remember, I think, and I think that that does have a lot to do with why Keith Thurman has been acting like he, like he has 
and, and not really being actively very vocal about the Errol Spence or the, uh, I mean, I don't really care about the Sean Porter about, but, you know, is actively t- talking about Terrence Crawford, talking about Errol Spence Jr. And I think that in a large, a large part had to do with the fact that he had been waiting and trying to get Floyd Mayweather. And he'd been really trying to get, uh, he's trying to get Floyd Mayweather. He's trying to get Manny Pacquiao. And neither one of those guys were going to give him the shot. So, you know, he didn't have that path that if Floyd Mayweather had given him that shot or if Manny Pacquiao had given him that shot, that he could have got to be like a really big star because so many more people would have seen him in fight, right? You have, if you can get, you know, millions of people to watch you on pay-per-view intensely, right? And however many people are in the households with him, you know, when those pay-per-view buys are happening, because most people aren't going to watch, you know, spend $60, $70 on a pay-per-view and they'd be the only one in the room. Right. They're usually fight parties where you might have 15, 16, 10 to 20 people in the room watching the pay-per-view bout. Right. So and that allows to spread your name. So but when he talked about um, Errol Spence, he made an he made an error in something that he said that I wanted to point that I, I, I have to point out. He started talking about Errol Spence and what Errol Spence needs to do. Because at first I was like, okay, yeah, he's talking like he wants to do it. When is the when is the when is the hold up? It's not going to happen too quick. Too quick line happen. And then he talked about you know unification in unification in the welterweight division. How he's the WBC and the WBA champ, right? And how and then he specifically says how many he asked the question. How many bouts did he have to fight until he got to be, until he got to unify, right? (laughs) That's what he said. He said, look, Errol Spence Jr. is just, he just defended one time. So, you know, he needs to do, implying that he needs to do more in order to get a shot at unification. Because how many bouts did it take for him, you know, to get a unification bout? (laughs) So I looked it up. And I was like, yeah, good point. How many uh, defenses did you have? And it was his third defense. It was his third defense. He won his first major belt. And I'm not talking about interim, right? He was the interim WBA championship. He had the interim WBA world championship. He had the, uh, he fought for that three times against, with Leonard Bundu, Julio Diaz, uh, Jesus Soto Carras, interim WBA against uh, uh, Vazic, right? The WBO interim, inter- all that stuff, right? From 2012 to the, those are major belts. He won his, actually won his first belt, the belt that Floyd, Mayther, Floyd Mayweather was holding. He won that in 2015 against Robert Guerrero. So he won one, right? And then how many title defenses did he have before he unified with Danny Garcia? Two. He fought Luis Colazzo for the W. He defended for the first time in 2015 with Luis, Luis Colazzo. And then he fought one more. The second bout for the WBA title was Sean Porter. And then his third defense of the WBA title, he unified the WBC title with Danny Garcia. He did it in his third bout. So compare that to <laughs> compare that to uh, Errol Smith Jr., who won his W his IBF bout against title against Kell Brook. He defended it against Lamont Peterson. He is he gonna fight? He's either gonna fight Ugos or Ocampo in July. And boom, there you go. He's right there. <laughs> he's right there. <laughs> After that, he would have had he would have defended his title as many times as Keith Thurman has, man. Keith Thurman, and this is not a shot on Keith Thurman. Keith Thurman has defended the WBA title one, two, three times. He's not had, he's not, he doesn't have 10, 11 title defenses. He's got three title defenses. He won it against Robert Guerrero. Then he he defended against Luis Colazzo, Sean Porter, and Danny Garcia. That's it. Now, he's been defending it for three years. Right, which goes to the point of uh, barbershop 
I'm still laughing at that interview. He's like, come on, come on, uh, Keith, you only defend, you only fight once a year. The actual, the opposite, which is why, you know, the guy from Barbershop Conversations is not going to be as loved as the guy from Fight Hype because the guy from Fight Hype just, man, man, he just lit, he just lit a big bonfire and started blowing that smoke at my man. <laughs> That's crazy. You the new Mayweather. I'm serious, man. I wouldn't be surprised, dog, if you got to go and co- apologize to, to Floyd for that for that one. Because, hey, man, you know, I get on Floyd about being, you know, comparing himself to Muhammad Ali, you know, with the whole just pretty much just, dang, that needs, dang, there needs to be a copyright violation that TBE, that TBE, the greatest ever, they both have the same meaning. You know what I mean? Like, I'm the best ever. And all these other people call themselves the GOAT, like the greatest of all time. Man, they need to stop stealing that stuff. At least pay the man a little money for stealing his stuff, man. Regardless, that guy from Fight Hype gonna have to call Floyd and, you know, give him a quick apology, man. Like, you know, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I'm sorry I did that. Cause that was just a little, that was a little ridiculous. But to the point of um of Keith Thurman saying that Errol Spence needs to, you know, how many times is he how many times did I defend? Right? And he just defended one time. That's still continuing that line of talk, justifying why this bout can't happen <laughs> or why it should get pushed back. Now, note when he said he was talk also talking about Sean Porter and talking about how Sean Porter was, um, he basically says he ain't worried about Sean Porter because, you know, he's going to be Sean Porter. He'll do just enough to outbox Sean Porter. And I believe that. I don't see Sean Porter winning that bout. I don't I don't see Sean. I think they, Sean Porter could fight Keith Thurman t- 10 times and not win. I just don't think he's as good a boxer as, as, Keith, as Keith Thurman. And I think that's real. I think that's real difficult. Now I don't know. After having watched Danny Garcia, if there's ten bouts between Danny Garcia and Keith Thurman, I'm not too sure that Keith Thurman's going to beat Danny Garcia. You know, six of those ten. I think that's a lot closer between Danny Garcia and Keith Thurman, especially after watching that last bout with um, Brandon Rios. Even though it looked, and it wasn't that that. Uh, Danny Garcia looked super spectacular, right? Because he had a guy that was coming forward, coming at him. And it, the thing that I liked about Danny Garcia that I saw in that bout was that Danny Garcia made, he made adjustments. And he was, he was thinking, he showed that he could buy, that he could fight on his back foot a, a little bit. And, um, you know, eventually he figured it out and he, and he did what he's supposed to do. Keith Thurman, Look to me as if Keith Thurman had a harder time in the second half of the bout. And thank you for the subscriber to the subscriber that corrected something that I said in another video about uh, Keith Thurman having won a unanimous decision against Danny Garcia. It was definitely a, a split decision. And I can, and I don't, and man, I think that uh, Danny Garcia won the second half of that bout. Maybe it was the in, injury. Maybe it wasn't. I, I don't know. Um, but I just think that Danny Garcia matches. I think Danny Garcia matches up pretty well against Keith Thurman. And I think the big difference in that bout really was that, that Keith Thurman sat down and hit him with some real heavy shots in the early part of the, uh, of the bout. And we'll see how Keith Thurman's elbows hold up. Now, I do think that just like Keith Thurman said in this interview, um, <laughs> that, you know, he just needs one tune up. That, that's completely fair. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it again. Keith Thurman is getting a ton of pressure, but the pressure he's getting should be based on the way that he's sounding. And this interview, he sounded a little more firm, but look, man, he got to, he has to at least correct that narrative. He is not relative to Errol Spence Jr. And there's a video, actually, Lewis Coleman had asked me uh, to do a video. Shout out to Lewis Coleman. Man, always in the always in the super chat in the uh, in the live stream, you know, doing super chats in the live stream, you know, helping out the helping out the cause. Thank you very much, sir. And this is kind of answering his question, but I will make a specific video about it. If you really look, if you look at the career of for me of um, Errol Smith Jr. and Keith Thurman, there's really of course, there is, you know, a little, there is an advantage in what they've accomplished for uh, edge to, 
to um, Keith Thurman. I mean, I'm not going to say that. I mean, I definitely do see that. And I can see why Keith Thurman would believe that he, you know, that he's the man at welterweight. I think that's a reasonable thing for him to be, to to believe based on what he's done. However, in a straight comparison of what they've done, you know, that might not necessarily that might not necessarily be as wide a gap as as Keith Thurman is is believing or would have you believe. One, Kell Brook. If you look at the last three fights of of Errol Spence Jr., just the last three, in Leonard Bundu, Kell Brook, and Lamont Peterson, right? The last three fights for Keith Thurman are Luis Colazzo, Sean Porter, and Danny Garcia. Kell Brook, I think, is better than all Three of the people, I think, matter of fact, I think that the biggest, that Kell Brook is better than anybody that Keith Thurman has fought. And I honestly have a, in my heart, if before this Errol Spence and before this uh, Gennady Golovkin bout happened, I would have leaned towards Kell Brook being better than Keith Thurman. And I kind of believe, and I truthfully, I think that Kell Brook might have been the best welterweight. Now I know that if these triangle theories and all that stuff don't don't work, right? The, you know, this guy beat this guy, so this guy will beat this guy. However, I do think if you look at the like if you look at how Keith Thurman had the bout he had with Sean Porter, I think the gap between the way that Kell Brook handled Sean Porter, I don't think that fight was in question at all. And I think that that was a much easier Kell Brook made Sean Porter look a look e- made it look a lot easier against Sean B- Porter than than Keith Thurman did. And another common opponent was, well, yeah, that was the common op- opponent with Kell Brook. If you look at what Kell Brook when Kell Brook fought Errol Spence, I mean, when uh, Keith Thurman fought Leonard Bundu. I thought that that was a good, I mean, I had him winning it pretty, you know, comfortably. You know, I had him winning it comfortably. But then Errol Spence, that was an absolute destruction, an absolute destruction of Len- Leonard Bundu. And then if you look at how many, so the championship of the championship, and then if you look at Danny Garcia versus Lamont Peterson, I think Danny Garcia and Lamont Peterson are about what and what. Quite honestly, and and for real, I think they're, He's be- and he's better than Luis Colazzo. Hey, I think I think he's better than Robert Guerrero. So, if I'm looking at what these guys have both done in their career, other than the fact that Danny Garcia held the WBC belt, you know, the Danny Garcia hold, held the WBA uh, hold the held the WBO the WBA belt. Excuse me, the WBC belt. Or actually, man, I think that's a vacant. Yeah, that was fought for a vacant title. Yeah, I think the WBC belt was vacated by. No, he won it against Robert Guerrero. Forgive me. So yeah, man. Or might he might have won a vacant belt against Robert Guerrero because I don't think Robert Guerrero was ever the champion. So, you know, all in all, man, I don't think. First of all, I, <laughs> fight hype was a little bit off talking about arrows that uh, that uh, Keith Thurman's a new Mayweather, and I definitely still think even with what they've accomplished in their career so far, that there's not a tremendous gap between Keith Thurman and Errol Spence. Errol Spence, I think he has the best win in Kell Brook. Now, you can put a little bit of a caveat on that by saying Kell Brook had just lost, right, by and might have been damaged by Gennady Golovkin. But just on paper, I think the the best win... He might even have the best, he has the best win and probably a tie for the second best win over Lamont Peterson. Because I don't think Lamont Peterson, I don't think Danny Garcia is better than Lamont Lamont Peterson. I don't think um, Sean Porter is better than Lamont Peterson. If Sean Porter and Lamont Peterson fought, I think that's a 50-50 fight. I think if Danny Garcia and Lamont Peterson fight next month, it's a 50-50 fight. I think if Kell Brook didn't have his I didn't hadn't just got knocked out twice. If Kel if Kel Brook fought Keith Thurman, I wouldn't I think that would be a 50-50 fight. So, but when you see Lamont Peterson in with Errol Spence, that's not a 50-50 fight. 
that was not a 50-50 fight. That was a, I know, I could tell you ahead of time that uh, Barry Hunter was going to throw in the towel. And when I look at um, Lamont, P- uh, guy, who was the other one I mentioned? You know, shoot, Kel- L- Leonard Bundu, that was, well, it was, I don't think it was a 50-50 fight for him either, but Danny Garcia, I would love to see the fight with Danny Garcia and, and Errol Spence, but honestly, man, I don't think that's a 50-50 fight either. I don't think that's a remotely 50-50 fight. I think Lamont, I, I think that Danny Garcia, I think that fight's going to turn out pretty much the same way Lamont Peterson turned out. Maybe go, it might go, it might go a little bit longer. But, you know, truth of the matter is that these guys are not very, very far from one another as far as what they've accomplished. But I do like the fact at least that that, er, that Keith Thurman is starting to, you know, He's recognizing the pressure that's on him to get in the ring with Errol Spence Jr. And that's a mega fight that can happen. So, you know, I'm really looking forward to it. And with that, I'm out. Peace.